Hello, today I'm sharing specific steps for long wearing foundation for summer. I live in New Orleans. It is brutally hot and humid most of the year, especially right now. Starting with these foundation steps will keep your makeup looking beautiful and natural all day long. You can use whatever products you have on hand, but I am really excited to be partnering with Lancome on this video to share a long time foundation favorite that's great for any skin type. Lancome 10 E Doll Ultra Wear Foundation plus their new newly released Tenny Doll Ultra Wear All Over Concealer that I've been testing out and loving, as well as some other products. Depending on how long or hot or humid your day is, you may want to use all of these steps or pick and choose, play around, see what works for you. I just wanted to throw all of these options at you to share what I do on the longest, hottest, most humid days, but you do not have to do everything I show in this video. This is just a guide for those of you who want your makeup to look natural and last as long long as possible and you don't want to have cake face, you don't want to pile on a bunch of foundation. So let's go ahead and get into the steps that I use for long wearing foundation, whether it's summertime or I just have a really long day. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new and let's get started with step one, which is priming the face. Now don't think of priming as just using a primer. We have a couple of options in this step. Now something that goes along with priming is prepping the skin. This is really important and a lot of people forget get it, make sure you wait at least five to 10 or more minutes if you can between your skincare and that first step of makeup, which in this case is priming. The last step of our skincare routine is typically sunscreen. So you just want to let that sit and absorb before we do any of this. That will give your makeup more of a chance of lasting longer throughout the day and it won't slip off your face as much. Now if you're prone to getting some shine, some oil in your t-zone, you may want to blot with either a blotting sheet or one ply of a tissue before you prime. It's just a little step but it can make a big difference in the longevity of your makeup. Setting spray is not always used just as the last step of our makeup to lock it in. I'm using it right now as the first step of my makeup to prime my face to give my makeup something to adhere to to help my makeup last even longer. Now, those of you that really don't wanna use a primer on your face, you can actually use this as your primer to give your foundation something to stick to, but I'm using this as the first priming step so that my primer has something to adhere to. I love using primer beneath most foundations. I just think it can do really great things for the skin, and I love that there are so many different kinds now. Today, I'm using a hydrating primer because I've been having some surface dehydration. It's really important no matter what primer you use to only use a pea size amount. That's all you need for your entire face. If you use too much, it can do the opposite of what it's supposed to do. It can actually have your makeup and your foundation slide around on your face, which is not what we want, especially right now. It's important to let that primer settle in to the face before you go in with foundation. I usually will prime my eyelids during this portion. You can use an eyeshadow primer. I'm actually going in with the concealer here, which I'm gonna talk about in a second and I'm gonna show you a couple of different shades too. I know this is more about the face than the eyes, but even if you're not wearing eyeshadow, it's going to help keep your makeup from smudging on your brow bone if you're prone to that. This is an optional priming step for those of you who get shiny in your T-zone. It's been around for a long time, way before YouTube. You take a tiny amount of loose or pressed powder onto a brush. I like to use a small brush just to have a little bit more control. If there's any excess left in my lid, I like to dump it back into the container and then I swirl my brush around that lid to really work the powder in to the brush and then you lightly dust that brush all over your shine prone areas. The key is to use the tiniest amount of powder. This helps keep shine and oil at bay which keeps your makeup looking fresher longer but it also somehow gives you more coverage out of your foundation so you can use less. I don't know how that works but somehow it does. This priming step seemed pretty detailed but you can use one step, two steps, all the steps. You can customize it to your needs. I just wanted to give you all the options. On days like this I prefer to use a barely damp sponge for foundation application for a couple reasons. It not only helps me control the amount of foundation because you're pressing it into the skin, it really helps the foundation mesh with the skin. It's clearly important to use a long wearing foundation on days like this. And one of the reasons why I've loved Lancome Tint Eat All for so long is because it is natural looking, even though you can build it up to full coverage. It wears for up to 24 hours and it's great for any skin 
type. It's sweat resistant, it's humidity resistant. I love it for my oily combo skin, but it also doesn't catch on any dry patches that I happen to have. It gives a natural matte finish. It doesn't flatten out my face. You know how some foundations can do that that are long wearing. It's also fragrance free. I know that's so important to so many of you and there are 50 shades to choose from, which is hugely important as well. So I am in the shade 320 Bisque. That's the shade I'm gonna be applying today. I think it's a great match. And I'm starting off with one pump and I'm lightly dipping my sponge into just a small, small segment of what I pumped out. And I'm starting in the center of my face because that's where I want the most coverage. And I'm gonna build out from there, but I feel like you can see a difference already just from that light amount that I put on from one side of my face to the other. I don't take my foundation underneath my eyes. So let's just ignore those circles for now. We are gonna do something about them here in a minute with the concealer. It looks great, it looks natural. I have not applied a ton. I'm just adding more where I feel like I need it. That's the kind of coverage I really like this time of year. Now coverage is gonna vary from person to person, how much you need versus how much I need. One pump was all I needed for my whole entire face. I feel like you can tell, I'm hoping you can tell how that warmed up the skin, evened it out and how nice my pores look. It feels like nothing and just looks really nice. And I was not going for a full coverage look even though I could have used more foundation and gotten that if I was say going somewhere at night. Now for my under eyes and for any other spots I wanna conceal on my face, I'm going to do that with the Tint Edol Ultra Wear Concealer. This is a hydrating, lightweight, full coverage concealer that can be used on the face as well as under the eyes. This has some nice ingredients in it. It's got moringa seed, water lily extract, and rose extract. They claim that this is supposed to give you 24 hours of hydration. It's supposed to be creaseless and cakeless and give a natural matte finish while being weightless and just comfortable. I've been wearing this and testing this out pretty much every day since I first got it, both on my face and under my eyes. I like shade 260 for on my face. I like shade 215 for brightening my under eyes. Now the consistency is pretty liquidy. I am showing you 260 underneath my eyes right now, which is great if you like your under eye concealer to kind of match your face. 260 is the shade that correlates with 320 foundation. So I am topping this, brightening it with shade 215. I just like the brightening effect that it gives. There are a couple of concealers I have in my life that I prefer to blend out with my fingers. This is one of them. It truly meshes with my skin when I do that. I love the coverage level. It's very natural, yet it covers well. I have honestly never had a concealer that I could truly say was creaseless before, even ones that claim to be creaseless. I have a creasy under eye area. It's just my anatomy, but I honestly don't have to set this. I wore this all day one day and I did not crease under my eyes. I'm actually kind of blown away at that. Now you can use a corrector underneath this if you want to. I have done that, but I've worn it without like I have today and I think it looks nice. I just can't get over how natural this looks and how it doesn't crease if I don't set it. It's just an anomaly for me. This is the point where if you're applying any cream makeup products, blush, bronzer, highlight, you would do that now. I am not today. So I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the next step. Now we're gonna set our liquids and creams that we've applied. You can set with powder, loose or pressed, setting spray, or both if you want added insurance. I know some of you are powder averse, so setting with setting spray right here may be all that you wanna do. I am going to show you both. So I am going to use my barely damp sponge and dip it into the powder that I'm using. This is a long time favorite powder for me, this long time no shine because I can use it under my eyes as well as on my face. A lot of you have heard me talk about this incessantly on my channel. When I set with powder, I do it so that it looks completely natural and it meshes with the skin. I'm just taking a tiny amount and pressing it under the eyes. Now I know I don't need to set the Tint Edol Ultra Wear Concealer on a normal day, but on a really long hot day, I might do it just with a little bit of powder for added insurance. And I'm just going to press that underneath the eye lightly with a damp sponge and dust away any excess with a brush. I'm gonna go into that powder with a sponge. It's gonna look like there's a ton of powder on the sponge, but rest assured, everything will turn out fine. I'm gonna take the most amount of powder and just start dabbing it very, very lightly on the places where I get oil breakthrough, shine breakthrough the most, which is typically down the center of my face. And then I'll add it to the other areas. And I'm just gonna keep bouncing that sponge on my face until the powder starts to disappear into the skin and really mess 
mesh with the skin. I feel like that's kind of a key phrase with this video, mesh with the skin. We just want everything to kind of become one instead of just seeming like a bunch of layers. So after I've bounced that sponge on the face and the powder has basically just completely meshed with the skin, I'm still gonna dust a powder brush over the top of my face just to make sure there's no extra powder residue hanging out. This is something I did not show, but I do wanna make a note for any areas where you know you may have a mask or glasses, you may wanna let that powder just sit for a little bit longer and then dust away the excess. That'll just kind of, you know, lock it in a little bit more. You can now also apply setting spray on top of that to just lock everything in even more if you want to, or you can just do that as your sole step. Let that setting spray dry and then go in with any color powder products, blush, bronzer, highlighter, lip products, whatever you need to do if you still need to apply your eye makeup before we finish out our setting step. Now that all your color products are applied, you can go in with a final few spritzes of setting spray. Normally I do this before I put on my lipstick. I don't know what I was thinking today, but oh well. Let me know if there's something special you do on super hot or long days in the comments down below. I had a ton of July favorites and fails. I'll have that video linked here for you if you haven't seen it. I hope you found this video helpful and enjoyable, and I would really appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up if you did. Thank you so much for watching. If you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button and become part of the family, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!